One of these men played on the Olympic hockey team, which won the gold medal for the United States. What is your name, please? My name is Jack McCartan. What is your name, please? My name is Jack McCartan. What is your name, please? My name is Jack McCartan. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Jack McCartan, and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this evening by New Arid Whirlin, the only non-sticky roll-on deodorant. Arid Whirlin gives you lasting 24-hour protection the fast, easy way. That's new arid whirlin. And now let's meet our panel. First, breathless, but then she's breathtaking anyway. Just having come in from a studio in Brooklyn, and we didn't think she was going to get here. She walked in here 15 seconds ago, ran in here, I should say. Polly Bergen. Glad you made it, Polly. Thank you. Next, Donna Michi. And then with us for the first time, a brilliant young actress from England who just did a magnificent job on uh, Tiger at the Gates playing Helen of Troy, Miss Patricia Cutts. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. <laughs> Patricia, it's nice to have you with us. Nice to be here, as I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you just completed a couple of uh, motion pictures we ought to know about? Yes, one was called The Tingler. It's a horror picture with Vincent Price. And the other's called The Battle of the Coral Sea. Yeah. Uh, and that's about the Battle of the Coral Sea. That <laughs> figures. Well, much success to you. And now on tonight's show, too. Thanks. Caught your breath yet, Polly? No. I'm awful glad you made it. Oh, the snow is deep. I it? know it is. Oh. And incidentally, speaking about the snow, since we've met the panel, there have been some real hardy souls who came down and formed our studio audience tonight. And panel, if you don't mind, join me in some applause for those oh. who made the show for us. That's from us to you, and we love you for it, believe me, because this is a miserable night. It's the worst storm I can remember in a long time. All right, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this first affidavit? I, Jack McCartan, am a specialist fourth class in the United States Army. In college, I was an All-American baseball player and a member of the ice hockey team. I played goalie on the United States hockey team, which won the gold medal last Sunday at the Olympics at Squaw Valley. I am in the East to try out with the New York Rangers professional hockey team. I practiced with them for the first time today and will probably play goalie against the Detroit Red Wings on Sunday. Signed, Jack McCartan. <laughs> Panel, as these gentlemen are getting seated, may I remind you, you just heard them all claim to be Jack McCartan, member of the Olympic winning United States hockey team. You all set, gentlemen? All right, then let's start our questioning in this first round with Don Amici. Don? Number one, uh, what time was the last goal made against Russia? Uh, about five minutes from the end of the period. Number two? It was about uh, one minute from the end of the period. Number three? I think it was about five minutes from the end of the period. Of what period? The third period. Uh, number one, uh, uh, how, many, how many saves did you make against Czechoslovakia? Uh, about 20. Number two? 22. Number three? I don't know. <laughs> uh, number, uh, number one, what is the name of the uh, Rangers' regular goalie? Uh, Gump Worsley. It's Al Rollins right at the moment. Number two, what's the name of the uh, Red Wing goalie? I don't know that. Number three? Uh, Terry Sawchuk. Uh, Patricia? Um, number three, how did you get back from California? I flew. Oh, how did you, number, number two, how did you? I flew. Number one, how did you? I flew, too. Um, uh, showed me a lot. Um, <laughs> number three, uh, what college did you go to? The University of Minnesota. Oh, number two, which one did you go to? University of Minnesota. My questions are getting kind of dull, aren't they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> number three, uh, have you ever played anything else besides gold and hockey? No, ma'am. Oh, well, I ought to go soon. Number two, um, uh, I passed. Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, number three, could you tell me who is Hank Dascoli? Might you know that name? No, I don't. Uh, could you tell me how many sets of brothers played on the American uh, hockey team in the Squaw Valley? Two. What are their names, please? Still number three. Christians and uh, the Clearies. Thank you. Number two, what is icing? Icing is when the uh, puck goes from uh, the defensive 
uh, behind the defensive blue line all the way down and past the goal line on the other uh, team without being touched by anyone. Thank you. Uh, what is the blue line, number one, please? The blue line? It, uh, the section of the ice that uh, separates, it, separates it into the offensive and the defensive zones. Thank you. Number one, do you know who Hank Dascoli is? Number one, you said. Yes. Uh, no, I don't. Number two, do you happen to know? I'm afraid I don't. Holly? Oh, thank you, bud. Number one, it says that you're a specialist fourth class. What do you specialize in? Uh, nothing. I do what they tell me. <laughs> well, um, I've never heard of that rank. I'm, I'm sure that I'm probably showing my ignorance, but is there anything that it's uh, equivalent to? A, uh, specialist, number a corporal. One? It's the same as a corporal or a pay grade E4. Oh, I see. And number two, could you tell me the name of the goalies on the Detroit Red Wings that you're playing on Sunday? I'm afraid I don't know. Do you know number one? That's it. It's time to vote. Without consultation, will you kindly mark your ballots, panel? And select, of course, as always, number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All set? Everybody marked? For whom did you vote, Polly? Well, I voted for number three because when Don asked how many goals they stopped, number one said something like 20 or something, and number two said 22, and number three said, I don't know. And if he was lying, it, I figured he'd go along with one of the others, so he must be the real one and just doesn't keep count. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don, what about your vote? Well, I voted for number three, and uh, if anything, my reasons for it are a little more complicated than Polly. Oh. So I don't think there's any sense in going into that, is there? <laughs> okay, you agree on that one. All right, Patricia? I voted for number three for the same reasons as Polly. Now I wish I hadn't, because number one looked kind of funny when we said that. Oh, did he really? <laughs> uh, um, and your vote, Tom? Number three. Well, right down well, the line. For a lot of reasons, he didn't, uh, he, he tended to correct uh, the other two on a couple of occasions when he might just as well have said one or the other or taken his choice and uh, he knew the goalie of the of the Red Wings which is interesting because number two didn't even remember he said okay there you have it rhymes and reasons we come now to what we sometimes call the moment of truth on our show as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is the member of the Olympic winning United States ice hockey team so will the real Jack McCartan please stand up on uh, behalf of the panel, may I shake your hand and tell you how proud we are of all of you? Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Good luck to you, boy, in your professional career. I'm sorry we picked right. <laughs> yeah. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you do? Uh, my name is Lee Ross. I'm associated with Reynolds and Company here in New York as a stockbroker. And number two, your real name and what you do? My name is Carl Scholler, and I'm with Regal Paper Corporation as a salesman. Thank you, sir. Well, in checking up on our score, we find that there were no incorrect votes. So that means that from Arid, you receive $150, gentlemen. It's split up three ways. And also a year's supply of rise, instant lather for each of you. Hope you've enjoyed your visit. We've enjoyed having you here. Don't go out into the storm with your eyes too tightly shut because there's a lot of it out there. Good night and good luck to you. you. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Lincoln Borglum. What is your name, please? My name is Lincoln Borglum. What is your name, please? My name is Lincoln Borglum. Once again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Lincoln Borglum, am a sculptor. I am the son of the American sculptor Gutzen Borglum. Undoubtedly, my father's greatest work was the carving of the heads of four presidents into the granite face of Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I worked on the mountain with my father for nine of the 14 years it took to complete the project. When my dad died in 1941, I took charge and finished it. It is the largest piece of sculpture in the world, and experts say it will stand as a memorial to our democracy for the next several hundred thousand years. Signed, Lincoln Borglum. 
All right, we have three gentlemen this time claiming to be Lincoln Borglum, sculptor, and famous one at that. Let's start this cross-examination with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Number two, looking up at the monument, uh, could you name the presidents from left to right? Mm -hmm. Washington, Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Uh, number two, is that... Uh, I'm sorry, number three, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Number one, do you agree? Yeah. Uh, number three, there was a picture recently made, uh, uh, involving the, uh, monuments in Mount Rushmore. Could you tell me the name of that picture? North by Northwest, I believe. Uh, number one, what year did your father start the monument, the carving of the monument? 1927. 1927. Did he carve it all alone, I mean, until you joined him? Oh, no, there was a staff of about... 65 people most of the time. Well, he drew it and then they followed his instructions. Well, he supervised it, yes. I see. Don? Number two, what year did your father start this project? 1927. Number three? 1927. Uh, number, uh, number one, what is the composition of Mount Rushmore? Granite. Number two? Granite. Uh, number uh, uh, two, who drew the designs for the president? Uh, my father. Number three? My father. Uh, number one, what, what material is most generally used in sculpturing? Well, bronze, marble. Number two, what is most generally used? Bronze, marble. Number three? <laughs> bronze, marble, terracotta. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, what, is, uh, what is Michelangelo's most famous work as a sculptor? Uh, number two? I don't know. Number three? Patricia Cutts. That's not his most famous <laughs> work, but it's a mighty lovely one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Number one, uh, were you in the United States Marine? No. Number two, were you? No. Number three, were you? No. Um, uh, oh, what is the most famous collection of modern sculpture in New York? Number one, what is the most famous collection of sculpture in New York? The Modern Museum. Yes. Number two? Modern Museum. Yes. <laughs> um, Famous English number one. What famous English sculptor is known for putting rather a lot of holes in all his sculptures? Uh, Jacob Ep Epstein. Yeah. Number two. Tom Poston. Oh. Thank you. Excuse me, Patricia. Number one. I guess uh, once the uh, Mount Rushmore Memorial statues were carved, the faces were carved. There was nothing more to do. That's it. You're finished with them for eternity. No, uh, there's a certain amount of maintenance work that has to be done. Maintenance work? What is that? Maintenance work. Well, uh, due to the weather, there are cracks and fissures that develop, and they have to be filled. Thank you. Could you tell me, is there an English equivalent for the name uh, Gutson? Uh, Gutson? I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, no, not that I know What of. Does it have a meaning in English, Gutson? Good man. Gutson Todman? <laughs> Believe it or not, that just occurred to me. Oh. I do have well, a joke, though, if you want to hear it. <laughs> it's time to vote once more, panel, so will you kindly, without uh, consulting with each other, please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. Hey, you're right on your toes there tonight, Polly. For whom did you vote this time? Well, I'm still rushing, you know, like I haven't gotten here yet. I voted for number one. I really don't know why. They all seem to answer their questions, you know, about the same. Not one, any one of them stood out, but I just have a feeling for number one. Okay. It's not personal, it's just... I apologize. He wishes it were. Uh, Don, your vote, please. I voted for number one, Bud, and it's a pure guess on my part. I couldn't tell from the answers given who was who. Okay. Patricia? <laughs> I voted for number two, because I would have said it wasn't Jacob Epstein. It was Henry Moore who had the role of Holy and finally, Tom. I voted for number one. You say number two? Yeah. Bless your heart. Well, I'm glad somebody finally differed with the rest of us. <laughs> All right, there we have it now. With our minds made up, if you're guessing with us, let's see whether we're right or wrong. We'll find out right now which one of these stalwart gentlemen is the real sculptor. So will the real Lincoln Borglum please stand up? to fool this panel of ours 100% these days, believe me. Thank you very much, sir. Not Thank sir. you. May I ask a question? Well, as soon as we meet the other two... Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Don't like to keep them in abeyance too long. Number one, you tell us your real name and what you really do, please. Ray Becker. I'm an insurance broker in New York. <laughs> you got the most books, too. Right? <laughs> 
Number two, you're real name and what you do? I'm John Blumstrom. I'm with Campbell Lee Wald Advertising in New York. Thank you, sir. Now, Don, you had a question. Oh, well, there was a little discrepancy about when this project was started that I couldn't quite figure out. Well, go ahead. What is it? Well, it was, he said it started in 1927. His father died, and uh, he completed the work. Yes. In other words, it, uh, it was not completed by 1941, was it? Did it have to be started later than 27? No, it was started in 1927. The actual carving was started in 1927, and he died in 1941, and I carried it on for about nine months after he died. Oh, oh, I see. Ah, well, then this, this had me confused on, uh, on here. I just assumed that it was a lot longer after your father died. No. In other Thank words, our, our truth teller is not a liar after No, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, could I ask, uh, is it really uh, uh, marble and bronze are the two uh, 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 most commonly used? Uh, uh, I think so. They I are. Thought no? clay. I thought well, clay. Is that just children use clay? <laughs> yeah. children. Clay is rather impermanent. Well, what I felt shouldn't be too permanent. <laughs> Well, let's check our score. We find, as you heard, that there were one, two, three, four incorrect answers or votes at $250 each for a grand total of $1,000, gentlemen, from Arid. Of course, a year's supply of Carter's fine products for you. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night and happy carving. We'll be back in just a moment. Now, panel, let's have our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Kirby Westheimer. What is your name, please? My name is Kirby Westheimer. What is your name, please? My name is Kirby Westheimer. Please pay attention, panel, to this affidavit. I, Kirby Westheimer, an alumnus of Yale University, am now a graduate student at Harvard Business School. I also happen to be an expert on Mexican jumping beans. I recently made the nation's newspapers. I flew into the Sierra Madre Mountains of Mexico and bought up every bean that actually jumped. <laughs> I packed the one million beans in five-gallon cans and after tremendous difficulties, flew them back into the States. I cornered the world's market of Mexican jumping beans. Signed, Kirby Westheimer. <laughs> All right. Gentlemen, are you comfortably settled? If so, uh, as you know, you heard these three gentlemen all claim to be Kirby Westheimer, who cornered the world's market of Mexican jumping beans. Yes, sir. And we start this round with Tom Poston. Tom, please. Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, please, Mr. Westheimer, what are you going to do with your cartel? <laughs> <laughs> Sell the beans. Sell the beans. Oh, I see. Number two, could you tell me, where did you land in Mexico? Well, that's sort of a trade secret, as the beans come from the Sierra Madres, and I don't want to let the world, the rest of the world in on the market. <laughs> number three, is, you mean to tell me there's an airfield in the Sierra Madres that's secret number three? There most definitely is. There definitely is an airfield. <laughs> well, Man, one is of us it is, jumping. One of us is nuts here. <laughs> and... Uh, as a, as a Harvard student, number one, Mr. Wertheimer, are you familiar with the uh, quotation, West Henry, Westheimer, I'm sorry, M Henry Tudor is insatiable? First of all, I'm not a Harvard student when I was an undergraduate. I'm only a Harvard Business School student. I'm a Yale student uh, as an undergraduate. And I can't really say as a Yale student what that would be, but it's probably from Henry IV. Number two, uh, could you answer that question quickly, just yes or no? I'm afraid not. Number three. No. Thank you. Polly? Number one, why? Why what? <laughs> why, why, why for Yale? No, I mean yeah. why, this whole thing. Well, <laughs> there's a, there's a, a rivalry between Harvard and Yale that's been going on for some centuries, I believe. And uh, even though a person is in the Harvard Business School, no, he's I, considered I, to be... No, I, I didn't time. No, I'm sorry I asked. It's all right. <laughs> uh, no, but number two, isn't it illegal to sell Mexican jumping? Weren't they, uh, weren't they banned in the United States or something? Number well, two? Uh, we had to go through a rather roundabout means to get them into the country, but uh, we in actually paid... In other words, paid... sir, do I understand you? You are illegally holding <laughs> several million gallons of Mexican jumping beans. No, that's not quite true. We did pay duty. Uh, you paid duty? Uh, yes. 
Did they, uh, but, uh, but they, if you're not supposed to sell them here, how do they know what you were paying duty on? I don't want to send you to jail. Don, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don, I'm sorry. Oh, I hate to leave this uh, uh, jumping bean situation here, but I've got no information yet. Number one, what's the name of the field at Yale? Uh, the Yale Bowl. Uh, number two, what's the name of the field? Yale Bowl. Three? Yale Bowl. Uh, number one, what's the, who's the football coach at Yale? Uh, Jordan Oliver. Uh, number uh, two, what is the name of the field house at Yale? Number three? I don't know. Number one? I don't know that. Uh, number, uh, number one, how do you say good morning in Mexican? Well, you say buenos dias, like in Spanish. Uh, number two, how do you say uh, good night? Uh, buenas noches. Uh, number uh, three, what is your scholastic schedule at, uh, at uh, Harvard now? Rugged. <laughs> Number hey, one, outside of rugged, what's your sense? Well, I take about seven courses throughout the year, finance and marketing, uh, accounting, brass. Uh, we take a writing course in, uh, for the pamphlets and things that we might have to do and encounter in our, in our work later on. Uh, Patricia Cutts. Number one, <coughs> who owns all the Mexican jumping beans before you bought them from me? Pardon? I'm sorry. Who owned the Mexican jumping who, uh, beans Well, before the you... Indians in the Sierra Madres, the Yaqui tribe. Number actually. two, who owned them before you bought them? Well, I don't think anyone actually owns them. They are wild, and the Indians <laughs> gather them. Number three, who owned them before you... <laughs> well, they're not exactly owned. They, they grow wild, and those people that pick them own them. Number three, uh, was it an old man, though, who had most of them, Mexican jumping? Very beans? old. That's what happened. <laughs> That's it, Sam. Once again, it's time to vote. Will you kindly mark your ballot once more without discussing it with each other? And vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody voted? Okay, yes. Polly, for whom this time? I haven't voted yet, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I thought you had. Well, I, I sort of hate to, to identify the real one because I have a terrible feeling that he's going to be sent to prison or something. <laughs> but We're all under arrest. I, you know, I thought all along it was number one. Uh, but I voted for number three at the last minute for some unheard of reason. <laughs> I don't know. Even what you haven't is. heard of it. I never even asked what's inside a jumping bean to make it jump, you know. So we got, we picked up a lot of information this panel tonight. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Don. I voted for number one. I thought that that uh, schedule he gave me of his uh, classes sounded like it uh, probably would get him to be a real good businessman. Okay, Patricia, which one do you think is the real one? Uh, number three I voted for. Uh, sort of on the instinct. <laughs> <laughs> jumping instinct. And Tom? I leaped at number one there, bud, because... Uh, he was pretty definite about the Yale-Harvard business, and uh, he certainly knew what answers we did manage to ask him, although I must say they all did. I think it's a conspiracy. <laughs> all right, let's see whether it is or not. We'll discover right now which one of these gentlemen is the real cornerer of the market of Mexican jumping beans. Will the real Kirby Westheimer please stand up? Thank you very much, Kirby. The two lovely ladies on our panel did well with that one. You always laugh about it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. There you Don't are. You it worked. <laughs> Number one, tell us who you really are and what you do, please. My name is Robert Scher. I work for Dover Publications, and I'm assistant to the president. And you did a good job tonight. <laughs> and number two, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Ralph Craig. I am presently employed at a club in Greenwich Village. I'm a trombone player. <laughs> I think maybe we have just a second. I'd like to ask, so that you all may know, although I found out earlier what it was all about, what does make the jumping bean jump? There's a little um, pet inside. A pet? Bangs his head against the uh, shell. Well, what That's what makes him jump. Of? Well, it's a little animal inside that jumps because of the heat. Huh. And does he ever get out of there? Only in the Sierra Madres. Never uh, here. No, that doesn't like the city life. I see that. Both womb and tomb in this little shell until uh, in the Sierra Madre. I see. Well, there you are. And thanks for the supply of information. You have a supply of uh, Rise Instant Lather coming to each of you. And 
from uh, Arid, let's see on the score here, we had two incorrect at $250 each for a total of $500. Hope you had fun and keep the joint jumping. Good night. Good luck. Well, our time is all gone for tonight. Patricia, I hope you had as much fun as you seem to, and thanks for yes, being I with did. us. Thank you very much. Good night and good luck to you. Kitty Carlisle will be back with us again next week. That's it. Good night, panel. Good night, night bud. bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Arid Whirling Deodorant and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Goodson and Godwin production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen's wardrobe by Fashions of the Four Seasons Doctor. <laughs>